Okay, so let's think about where we were at in the last video that we talked about. We were talking about something called the Markowitz model. And we wanna, as we, you may have recognized that Markowitz model requires a great number of data points. So we have to gather lots of numbers. We have to have fairly sophisticated uh, computer power in order to calculate uh, the, uh, the numbers that are necessary uh, just to do the analysis. So we want to talk about something here referred to as an index model. So it's a simpler model, if you will. So the inputs for the Markowitz model, if you remember those, right? There's a formula, how, how you would figure those out. So a 30 asset portfolio you know, requires, in the ballpark, 495 data points. Uh, so it's a huge number of uh, points uh, uh, of uh, calculations needed, not to mention the computer power to do that. So the single factor mo market model basically simplifies our equation. It says the rate of return of any asset is its expected return plus some unanticipated surprises. So how could we write that formula, write it out a little bit clearer, right? So the return on, the mar uh, on an asset is its expected return plus beta times M, right? So beta is response to a common factor. In this case, it would be the stock market, the stock market risk. And M is obviously is that factor plus E, and the E here, this residual, that is the unanticipated surprise that we might get. Variance is measured by its beta squared times the variance of the market plus the variance of these residuals that we might find. And of course, to find covariance, we can kick, if you multiply the betas times the variance of the market, you would be able to calculate the covariance between any two assets. So what you can see here is the, the, the data required to calculate return, variant, uh, stand, variance, and covariance. It's, it's much less data is necessary. To find the correlation, you need to find the correlation between the asset and the marketplace. That would be the simplest thing. Or here's our calculation up here before. Right? You just take the beta of the asset times the variance of the market, the beta of the other asset times the variance of the market, and you divide that by the products. That simplifies essentially to correlation times correlation. So again, very few data points are actually needed. So now we have a very simple equation. There is a regression equation and one for expected return. Statistically, which is what we're going to do here in a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about doing a uh, simple regression of an asset against a stock market. So the formula that we'll generate is alpha multiply, plus beta times the return in the market at that particular point in time, plus, again, these surprises, this residuals. So the expected return uh, relationship, it's alpha plus beta times the expected return on the stock market. So again, as we think about it, what is alpha? Talk about this a little bit more later. It essentially is the rate of return if the stock market got zero. Beta, we've talked about previously, is a measure of sensitivity. The E is a residual, it's a surprise. It was unanticipated. So we want to take this, these numbers, you see there's obviously much fewer pieces of data necessary for every investment we have. So let's, let's take a, a little venture down the math world, right? So here we have a portfolio, A, B, C, D. Here's how much is invested in each. Here are the betas. Here's the mean excess returns for those assets and their standard deviations. If we said that the standard deviation of the market portfolio was 35%, we want to calculate 
the following statistics. And we're not going to do all these, but I just want you to see how the, how the math is ultimately done. So let's go over here to the next. How do you find the mean excess return of the portfolio? It's just the weights multiplied by the returns. So in this example, this portfolio would have a mean excess return of 6.9%. Covariance, right? It's 1 times 1.75 times variance. So this is, if we come back here and look at our data, 1 is the beta of A, 1.75 is the beta of B. And again, 0.35 is the variance. So it's beta of A, beta of B, variance of B. So now we can find the covariances for all the combinations of these uh, for assets. What about covariance then between the stocks and the stock market? Again, the covariance, we have that formula. It's the beta, right, multiplied by the variance. So the covariances between the asset and the stock market, again, are calculated, in this case, between A and the stock market, it's 0.123 uh, is the covariance. And we see that they're all positively covari uh, covariant. Now, here's really the kind of important part. How can we divide this risk, the risk of this company, into its two parts, its systematic part and its residual part? So the systematic risk of A is the beta squared times the variance squared. That's that 0.123 is the systematic risk. Now. The, the actual risk of that portfolio, going back here, the standard deviation is actually 40%. So to find the residual risk, you take the variance of the, of the asset, the true variance, and you subtract from it the systematic risk that we have. So this then gives us the actual residual risk for the four assets that we have in our portfolio. And I know that math is kind of intense, but again, we're just trying to get a general feel for, again, how things can be separated uh, mathematically into their component parts. Again, a, a picture that we've seen before, right? If we're looking at the variance of these residuals, right? Those, the four we just calculated, if you were to calculate the variance of the residuals of this portfolio, it's one divided by N times the average residuals, right? But the important part of this formula for us to keep in mind is what happens as N gets bigger. As N gets larger, the variance of these residuals disappears. And again, this is our general idea of how we think diversification works, right? As you increase assets in a portfolio, diversification decreases. It's decreasing again because this n the number n becomes increasingly bigger so then overall the um, part of the risk here is disappearing while the beta and the variance of the market remain the same so systematic risk will not be decreased by adding more assets to the portfolio or diversifying however the total risk will so again that's a kind of short right but this is kind of a little bit of an intense chapter so the next part of this we'll get more into the statistics and look at simple regression so it'll be a little bit of a longer video uh, than this one